Jim Keenan may be, may be the person you, you can least describe in one word. He's thoughtful, he's kind, he's good to people. Compassionate. Magnificent, dedicated, friendly, uh, you know, they, they, they all fit him. Father Keenan is joyous. He's a man for others, but compassionate would be the one word. I'd say brother. I would say caring, caring. Wonderful. <laughs> Took my word. <laughs> Beautiful. He's solid. He's the guy. He's always there. He's always, he's the rock of Gibraltar. Is there any one thing? Nah, it's everything put together. It's a feeling, it's an atmosphere. Brother, son, friend, president. So if you wanted a word, it, it's probably priest. You know, the funny thing about Jim is that you sort of know of Jim Keenan before you actually know Jim Keenan. Uh, the legend and, uh, and the personality are so large. He's a tall guy with a really big, big voice. You would respond to that, a young Jesuit with a command voice that sounded a little bit like God was someone you wanted to be associated with. He was so young that uh, I think a lot of people mistook him for another student. He was 26 years old when he first came to Xavier, and he taught our sophomore class. We were the first class that he ever taught. So we were veterans, and he was a rookie. He always had an Irish cap, which you know, I said, do your priest actually allowed to wear Irish caps? But he did, and he pulled it off. He didn't really correct you, but if he felt the need to uh, maybe readjust your uh, attitude, he had this ability to uh, do the old Vulcan grip on your, uh, on your shoulder and you got the point. He wasn't trying to discipline or make you, he wanted to understand what you were doing was not correct. And that's what he did. And he did it by talking to you and not talking down to you. And he always, always brought you up to his level. He always finds the fun part of something, even in some difficult times. And his laugh is very infectious. You know, once he starts laughing, you feel like laughing. Jim didn't drive at the time, and so whenever Jim went anywhere, he would find people to drive him. So it was, it was kind of like driving Miss Daisy. Well, have you seen him? He looks a lot like Jessica Tandy. So, so that's certainly part of the equation. Uh. Wherever he was, if he needed to be picked up or um, whatever the time was, he'd call you. You know, he'd say, okay, can I get a ride, you know, or whatever. <laughs> He has great skills on public transportation and also great skills in terms of getting people to pick him up in the damnedest of places. We would. You know, he knew that we'd always be there for him, as he had been for us. He's famous for, uh, you know, sitting in the backseat of a car on a trip someplace, and, and he's doing thank you notes. He would sit next to you in the car or in the backseat, and he would be constantly writing notes or doing work. And Jim had us on local roads seemingly turning every other block to, uh, to go multiple miles, all with Atlas in hand and, uh, and clear confidence that he would get us where we were going. And, uh, and as usual, he did. I would liken him to the, the mortar that holds the bricks in a wall together. He calls everybody on every wedding anniversary, every birthday, every memorial, uh, every graduation. He doesn't forget any anyone, any phone number, and it's not just his Xavier friends and students, it's St. Peter's Prep and McQuaid and Canisius and Nativity, wherever else that he served. He's got this book and he has all the information on thousands of people. I still, even in the days of computers, carry a piece of paper in my pocket where I write notes to myself to do things, which Jim always does. But I will send a card to everybody I've married on the day of their anniversary or on an anniversary of a death. I learned that from Jim Keenan. He's and every year we call him. each other and we try to remember what day is Jim's birthday. <laughs> right. <laughs> I often joke with him that he should be in the Guinness Book of Records uh, for having presided over the most uh, weddings. He's married me. He's baptized my girls. He's buried my parents. He officiated at my wedding the weddings of my daughters, the baptisms of my daughters, and the baptisms of all five of my grandchildren. He baptized all 10 of my grandchildren, and he baptized all five of my children. He married all my children, and the same thing, tell, tell the same thing with him. <laughs>
tell the yeah, same thing. He has married yeah. most of my family members, baptized most, had the communion for some of them, first communions. You better be giving him a date that's uh, four or five years from now because he's booked every weekend uh, from here till then. He is part of the family. You know that right when you get to know him the first time and it just continues right through. He takes care of you. You know he's there if you need him. My brother Mike, who's a year younger, also a Xavier grad, uh, his wife Helen passed at an all too early age. And within a few hours, not only had Mike heard from Jim, I had heard from Jim. He reached out for Mike to be a counselor and a friend and he reached out for me as the older brother just to make sure. My mom is turning 96 and I called him up two days ago and I said my mom is turning. He, he already knew my mom is, you know, he has her, he's in that book we talk about, he's got her date. And, uh, you know, I, I asked my mom, I said, what, were you, what do you want for, you know, for your birthday? This is, I've asked her for the past 20 years, what do you want for your birthday? And my mom says, could Jim say mass? That would be the that would be the best gift for me. One might argue that he represents the entire Jesuit focus, because he's probably been president of more Jesuit high schools than anybody else. My son, my father, and I spent an absolutely marvelous three days together living with the Jesuits at Canisius High School uh, as a result of Jim's generosity and his caring for us. And I got to tell you. It was the best three days that a father could spend with his father and his son. He has that quality of goodness. There are a few people in my life that I, that I know that really are good men. You know, you don't recognize it at the time. It's only in the continuum of his legacy, which is more than 50 years of being a man for others. My father, to the day he died, remembered it. I remember it to the day I die. My son remembers it, and my grandson. <laughs> also knows about it. So this is the kind of legacy that Jim leaves. And I want to thank him for that. We're both grateful that we had that opportunity yes. to live and learn from one of the best. If you could just help one small portion of the number of people that Jim helped, that would be a successful life. I would like to think that I learned how to be a good priest from Jim Keenan. What I've learned from Jim is I have to reach out for others and be there because it makes a difference. It matters. So we love him. And happy birthday. Do we get, do we say, when do we say happy birthday? <laughs> happy birthday, Jim, and thank you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Jim. Jim. Happy birthday, Father Jim, and congratulations. We love you. Happiest of birthdays. It's just amazing to us that you're, you've hit 80, and you're going to keep going on for many, many more years to come. Jim, a hearty happy birthday. Jim, many, many years, happy years ahead. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Jim. Jim. Many more. Brilliant. Happiest of birthdays to you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to have known you all these years. And uh, uh, congratulations also on your uh, 60th anniversary as a Jesuit. Uh, you know, keep me in, my, in your prayers, and uh, I'll do the same. Happy and healthy birthdays to the future. There are five of us in the family celebrating our birthday this much. We have January 2nd, January 6th, the 7th, the 9th, and the 17th. We're Capricorns, so I wish a happy birthday and many, many more. Uh, Uncle Jim, on behalf of everyone, the family, the, you know, mom, dad, my sisters, the cousins, um, my kids, Johnny, Jimmy, Ellen, and, and Maureen, and everybody else uh, out there, uh, happy birthday. And my mom says happy birthday. <laughs> And Kathleen says happy birthday. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go. 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 Chris says happy birthday. My wife has been with me since the early days with Jim Keenan. So I started dating her as a senior at Xavier. And Chris says happy birthday, Jim, because you've been there for all those years for both of us.